everybody. We're back today to continue on reading Samantha Loses the Box Turtle for Operation Storytime. And today we're going to be reading Chapter 3. Now, usually I have my lizard helping me, but it's a little chilly here today, and so she needed to stay in her warm cage. But, don't worry, my dog Mocha said that she would help us out, so she's going to be here to help with the read-along. Now, the first two chapters we did, let's remember, chapter one, Samantha found a box turtle in the road, and Grampy let her bring it home because there wasn't a safe place to set it off to the side of the road. They were in the middle of town. Uh, chapter two, Samantha and her little sisters got to know the box turtle a little better while mom found a container, a box with some pine straw to put the turtle in. Um, the pine straw was so the turtle could burrow down if he wanted to and feel safe. So let's see what's going on in chapter three. Chapter three, what's in a name? What should we name him? Samantha wondered. Box turtle number one, mom said. Mom, that's not a name, she groaned. We can name him Shelly because he has a shell, Sophie offered. That's almost as bad as box turtle number one, said Sam. Guys, I'm serious, Mom interjected. He doesn't get a name. As friendly and cute as he is, he's a wild animal, and we'll be letting him go tomorrow. Can we keep him, Mom? they asked. Absolutely not, replied their mother. Turtles take a lot of care, and we don't have the right kind of habitat for him. The girl sighed. Aww. They were just about to start arguing that they could make a habitat for him when their mom said, Well, I do know somewhere with a very nice turtle habitat. Somewhere that he would be taken care of, but we could still visit him. Somewhere like the nature preserve, the girls both shouted. That was perfect. Well, not quite quite perfect. Perfect would have been keeping him in their bedroom, but at least this way they could still see him. It also gave them another excuse to go visit the nature preserve, which they always loved. If he lives at the preserve, he still needs a name, Samantha pointed out happily. Yeah, so we'll know what to call him when we go visit, Sophie chimed in. Fair enough, Mom agreed. What can we call him? Just then, Michelle came toddling back over to see what was happening. Grampy and Gran were getting ready to leave, and her chip supply had run out. Wet turtle, she said as she looked into the box. Samantha looked into the box, but all she saw was pine straw. She had a moment of panic, and then she remembered the reason the pine straw was there to begin with. He's hiding, Sam told Michelle. Then she reached with her hand down into the pine straw until she felt something hard and lifted out the turtle. Michelle clapped. Seek hide, seek hide, she said, wanting to play hide and seek with the turtle. I'm afraid not, little one. You have to get ready for bed, Dad said, as he came in and swooped up Michelle. Grampy and Gran came by and gave each of the girls a kiss before they headed out the door to go home. They lived next door, so they didn't have far to go. It was nice having them close by. Samantha was really glad she got to see them every day. Her other grandparents lived a long way away, so she didn't get to visit them very often. She did get to talk to them on the computer, though, and this was the perfect time to video chat. As Sophie walked Gran and Grampy to the door, Samantha ran to the computer and clicked to call Grandma and Grandpa. She only had to wait a moment before she saw Grandma's face on the other end. Hey, Samantha, did you call to tell us good night? Grandma asked. Yep, and I have a surprise for you. Samantha was already holding the turtle in her hands, so she lifted him up in front of the camera. Oh, she's a beauty, said Grandma. Grandma, not she, he, Sam corrected. Well, how are you so sure? asked Grandma. She knew Samantha did know the difference, and Grandma was good about giving opportunities to show off. 
Samantha took her cue and started explaining. Here, look at the plastron, the bottom of his shell. See how there's a dip in it? Like somebody pushed his belly button in with a spoon. Only boys have that. It's so they can get on top of the curls? Sophie blurted out laughing. She heard Grandma and had come to talk. Their mom had told them earlier why the boy turtles had a dip in the shell on their belly, and the thought of one turtle climbing onto another turtle's back sent Sophie into fits of laughter. Also, Samantha continued in her most mature voice to try to win back the conversation. His eyes are red. Boy box turtles have red eyes, and girl box turtles have brown eyes. Or usually they do, anyway. I stand corrected, laughed Grandma. He is a beauty. What is his name? He didn't have one yet, said Sam. Boxer, said Grandpa as he joined the conversation. You should name him Boxer because he's a box turtle. Ha <laughs> ha! Grandpa laughed at his own joke. He never missed an opportunity to make a cheesy joke. Grandpa, Samantha laughed and groaned at the same time. He needs a real name, not a joke. Fine, how about George, he offered. Samantha shook her head no. That still wasn't quite right. Surprisingly, the perfect name came from silly Sophie. Let's call him Gazer, she said. Gazer? asked Sam. Yeah, because we found him on Gay Street, and I like the sound Zer, replied Sophie matter-of-factly. I like it, said Sam. Grandma and Grandpa agreed, and so their newly found box turtle was named Gazer. Mom, do you think I could take Gazer to school tomorrow before we take him to the nature preserve? Samantha asked right before she crawled into bed. We're studying the food chain in science. I could talk about what he eats and what eats him, Samantha persuaded. I don't know, honey, Mom started to say. Please, I'll take good care of him and won't let anyone hurt him. You are always saying that more kids need to get to know animals. Please, please, please. Mom sighed. She knew perfectly well that Samantha's true reason for taking the box turtle to school was to show him off to her friends. But she did make a convincing argument. The truth was, Mom thought it was a good idea too. She just didn't know what the school policy was on bringing live animals to the classroom. Tell you what, Sam, I'll give Mrs. Klutz a call tonight and see if it's even allowed. If it's okay with her, it's okay with me. Thank you, thank you, Samantha squealed. Mm-hmm, Mom mumbled. Now get some rest. Samantha went to sleep happy and excited for tomorrow. If only she had known what was coming. And that's the end of chapter three. You'll have to join us tomorrow to find out how it went with the box turtle at school.